wants to hear you tonight. We still in the series talking about no more sickness, God wants to hear us you healed. No more sickness, God wants, he wants us healed. Our second Timothy 1 and 7 says this. It says, for God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. So today we're going to talk about overcoming fear in sickness. Overcoming fear in sickness. Um, and today when I talk about overcoming fear and sickness, I'm just not, we did, I won't want to make the message very general, but it's going to really relate to sickness. Uh, but some of us, we have so many fears in our lives. And uh, uh, and today I want all of us to get delivered from fear. And I'm I'm, I'm a try. I've, I've been praying about it. I was went to bed a little later than normal last night and get to sleep to about twelve twelve thirty. And uh, I ran across Della Reese. I had uh, typed something in, look for something. I said, "What Della Reese doing, Tom? She, what she want to talk about?" Now the little message she had posted line. It was not about fear. The title had nothing to do with fear. But when I hit play, because it said the Reverend Della Reese. So when I hit play, the first thing she started talking about was fear. And I said, so when she began to talk, she began to go on and on. So then I gleaned some stuff from there. I believe that the Lord allows, allow things to come across my path in order to come back and share it with you that's going to bless us. Amen. Uh, uh, one thing that we've got to understand is this right here, is that fear, it works from the inside out. Fear works from the inside out. Uh, God has designed us to be fluid, F-L-U-I-D, that is how you spell fluid, right? He's designed us to be fluid. He did not design us to be frozen. God designed us to be fluid. He did not design us to be frozen. Uh, 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 if you go to your refrigerator and you get some ice out of the refrigerator, that ice is solid, what? And it is in one place. It's solid and it's in one place. But if I take my bottle of water and I pour water, and I'm not going to doubt this thing about today, an example I could use. And I said, well, I'm not putting no water on my beautiful podium. You understand what I'm saying? Cause I want to get stained up. So I said, but if you pour water out, when that water comes out, that water uh, uh, um, uh, is going to run. One thing about water, one thing about liquids, and one thing about fluid is this right here. If I pour the water here and the water hits against the edge of this, what it's going to do, it's not going to stop. It's what? It's going to find a way to run. It finds a way to run. Liquid always, anything that's fluid, it does what? It finds a way to run and get out. Even when this water runs off here and it gets in the carpet, uh, 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 it gets in the carpet. It seems like the carpet does what? It is soaked. It soaked it up. So uh, up under this carpet, there's uh, 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 VCT, there's vinyl composition tile up under this carpet. So what happens is this right here. If enough water gets in the carpet, and to our physical eye, it looks like the water has what? Has dried up, but it's so fluid, and if it's enough, it's going to do what? It's going to get up under the tile and cause the tile what? To pop up if it's enough water. God designed us to be what? To be fluid and not frozen. Uh, 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 um, uh, the main thing, watch this right here. Watch this right here. Um, I remember this right here. Uh, this may be uh, funny to you because back then it was funny to me for a while, and then it became real serious. Uh, uh, and then off and on it became funny and serious. But my grandmother, uh, Virginia L. White, she was a serious drama queen serious. I love my grandma. Don't get me wrong. And I believe that my nieces and my special, my nephew um, Nicholas, he has inherited every bit of that drama. I mean, like, I think he, she, if she had, if she had 120% of drama, he got like 180%. He inherited that drama. So, uh, 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 and Pastor Coleman tells a story, and she may get up and tell a little better than I can, because I won that one born yet. But, um, uh, Pastor Coleman had gotten of age. I guess she was 18 or something like that. And my grandmother liked to beat you. Well, she, we, we didn't get whoopings. And we, really, and we didn't get beat. We got killings. She said, I'm going to kill you. And <laughs> watch this right here. <laughs> and if she told you that she was going to kill you and she got them switches or she got a, whatever she got after you, your prayer was, God, please take me now. Because she would beat you with no mercy. So Pastor Coleman told her this right here. She got, I guess Pastor Coleman did something. Pastor Coleman was 18 or something. She got the belt, a stick, a skillet, a hot water tank. Whatever she could get in her hand, she got it. 
She, <laughs> she got a knife, threw that knife, that knife, that knife, then she threw the knife, and she was going to turn the corner that quick, and by the time she turned the corner, the knife stuck in the door. Her goal was to take you out. If I ain't know her like I knew, I would have thought that she was related to Lucy, <laughs> something to steal, to kill. <laughs> and she hurt you bad enough, she'd be what? The first one to holler. <laughs> But what she did, she, she was going to hit Pastor Coleman, and Pastor Coleman got her arm or got her hand or something. And she said, listen, I'm 18, I'm grown. You're not going to hit me like this no more. So, of course, if it was me, I would have wrung her neck. <laughs> <laughs> but what my grandmother did, she took herself and threw herself back on the wall. And, ah, and got still... See, I know it because when her, her sister died, I was there, and uh, she was at the house. She got the phone call. She threw herself into the wall and came aboard. She stiffly just slid onto the ground. And when I tried to pick up and take out, you couldn't get her because she was so stiff. And they'd be like, they'd be like, Miss White, just come on. Just, just let us move you. And then move. And look at the trembling. I said, God, I said, Lord, him. And she was just stiff. I said, God. So Sage and Aaron, when she got, we got when we went to, to the funeral, I knew she, she was gonna tell the, the church, New Zion Bible. I knew she was gonna tear it up. She said the funeral, they said nothing. I ain't said nothing. And I was just looking, I said, Well, what's wrong with grandma? I said, she ain't hollered and screamed and, and told her because you know, she, if she if she was here today. And y'all was in here singing, thank you, Lord, and all that. Uh, you know, Jennifer got her praise on, bro. Everybody's in here getting their praise on. Y'all will have to move out in the hallway because she's going to wait for the hall. <laughs> she's going to take it out. I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I, y'all might think I'm exaggerated, but this is the God to honest truth. This is 110% of the truth. So but at any rate, I got to that cemetery, and I got concerned because she hadn't cut up. I mean, that really, and that actually concerned everybody because she ain't said a word. Where you got that cemetery? She's walking down there across that thing. She said, oh, my sister. And she went, <laughs> and she falling back in the dirt. <laughs> and they had to pick her up and take her back to the car. And the family that rode in the car couldn't ride the car because she was so stiff as a boy. She had to do it. They had to lay out across the city. So when they got ready to get her, got back to her, I got ready. They had to get her by the beard and drag her. <laughs> Because she wasn't moving. But in the midst of our situation and circumstance, when we get in fear, we do what? We do the same thing. Well, Bishop, I don't stand like that. Yes, you do. Because when we get depressed, we lay in that bed and do what? And don't move. If you can get a fishing rod and just reel it into the kitchen shh, and reel that food up in there, you be, like, you be trying to reel that. We what? We don't move. Yes, Lord. We be in the car driving, don't even know how you got. If it weren't for the grace of God, don't know how you got to point A and point B. You be just like this. Yes, Lord. And all of a sudden you say, oh, I'm here. I'm at work. And you're like, how in the world did I get here? We become stiff. When you become stiff, watch this right here. When you get in fear, you become stiff and you can't move. So what happens is this right here. All of us, we've had some level of financial difficulty. Some level. I was telling, I told somebody the other day, sharing with a young man. I said, listen, I said, I know you're going through financial and all that kind of stuff like that. And I said, I know you think that... um, um, I got a lot. I said, I said, I have access to a lot. I said, but my problem, the same problem as your problem. I said, you need $100. I said, I need about 50000 I said, it's about the same thing. I said, I said, the same thing. And I said, but I said, but what I choose to do, I said, I choose to keep moving. But all you do is just sit at home, look at the wall. Cause fear. I don't know what in the world I'm going to do. And every time, I ain't messing nobody today. Every time you hear a truck, <laughs> get out on power. Get the waterworks. 
be sitting there and the TV blank out. Oh my God, they done cut my cable. Baby, the cable out of the whole neighborhood. Come on, get this thing, get, it, get that together. But well, we get what? Stiff. When sickness comes, we get what? We get stiff. Because we have been designed by nature, by God, to be uh, 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 to, to to preserve ourselves, to preserve ourselves. The thing is, is this right here? If if we get into an argument, and uh, and I get ready to haul off, and I'm gonna slap you. What happens is this right here. It's when I, and you may not even see my hand raising, but when you, some way, somehow, can't get no help. When you know what, some way, somehow, you know that hand coming, and you what? And you catch the hand, or you what? Or you duck back. Because you've been designed, what? To preserve yourself, because you don't want to get hit by me. By me. I ain't telling my nose. That's about else. Don't let me hit you, because I'm going to hit you and take you out. You understand? you understand what I'm saying? You don't want, so, so you've been designed, what, to preserve yourself. Every creature, to my knowledge, on the face of the earth has been, what, designed to preserve themselves. I, I, got, I got a pet. I don't like pets, but I got a pet. I got two pets. And both of my pets are named Bunny. We got two rabbits living in the front yard. They are not coming in the house. And no cage of death. They just live in the front yard. So every morning when Bunny see me coming, Bunny get to jumping and running because he may be done on. <laughs> so what happens is that, and, and watch this right here, they'll go all up in the bushes, all up under the rocks and all that. But when they see me and Pastor Scott, they go what? They go to run it a thousand miles an hour because they're doing what? Preserving themselves. When is the last time you saw a, a zebra on TV uh, standing there grazing grass and they looked over and saw a lion? They do, they start cutting them out. And the lion does what? Start making this way and he hide back and he start what? Cutting them eyes. And they go into what? Preservation mode. Because if I don't run, if I'm not fluid, <laughs> no help. If I'm not fluid, this lion, this tiger, what? Go eat me, go take me out. And when they see that lion, that tiger jump, they do what? They take off. And they, and they just don't run, but they do what? They start leaping. But when the last time you saw one of them say, they said, come on, get me. They said, come on and get me. But they're so fluid. They, they, they enter and they, and they jump and they leap and what? And they run and they got to do what? They got to save their lives. So, uh, so we have been created the same way. But what happens with us is this right here. When sickness comes, is that we feel like we don't have a way to do what? Preserve our lives. So we get into a place, what? A place of fear. So you can't, because you can't take, see, watch this right here. You can get a sore on your hand, and you put your little alcohol, little Band-Aid on it, and then the scabs start, start coming up and stuff like that. But what happens is this right here. When something happens in the body, you can't go in there and what? And fix it. So therefore, we do it. We just accept it, and we accept what people have said. So we accept what somebody has said about the sickness or about the disease. Some will be like, "It's over," because I can't do what nothing about it. And the reason people aggressively go to the doctor is because what's in me, I gotta what? I gotta get it out. I gotta get it. I gotta take care of this. I gotta feel better. But we feel like we what? We cannot preserve ourselves and we do what? And we enter into fear. But what happens? Have you ever known people that they find out they sick at the first of the week and they die in less than that week? There was this guy that worked at the service station and I'm just about finished. Got a couple more scriptures and I'm just about finished. Guy worked at the service station. Nice guy. He was a real, real nice guy, Caucasian guy, older guy. His name was Hugh. And uh, 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 Hugh would uh, show me special treatment when I would go in. And uh, uh, I, um, I won't forget one morning I went in getting coffee and all that kind of stuff like that, and I forgot my money. He said, oh, man, go on, get on up out of here. I, I got you. That, that, this ain't nothing but black water gone. 
So one morning, then another morning, I went in. I brought my own debit card. I swiped. It got declined. I think that morning I had a newspaper and coffee to come on. He said, "Listen, he said, he said, just come see me in the morning. We'll take care." He was just a nice guy. So he got a call. Uh, 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 like one Wednesday, and they said that and he did not know that his sister had been sick and been sick for a while up in California, and she died from lung cancer. And when nothing wrong with Hugh at all, period. So when he came back to work, he told the folks, you know, when my sister, she died from lung cancer, they told Hugh, they said, well, you might need to go and get yourself checked out. So then by Monday, he went to the doctor. The Monday he went to the doctor, and uh, 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 I said, so I went in. I said, well, where's Hugh at this month? They said, well, he went to the doctor, you know, because his sister died from lung cancer. He's going to get checked out. So then, uh, so then that same day, he found out that he had lung cancer too. So and uh, so I, the, the days I went, I asked about him and all that kind of stuff like that. So, uh, so, um, I, so they said, said, well, you know, he'll be all right, you know, because it's beginning stages and all that kind of stuff like that. So, um, so that he went at work none that week because I guess he was getting himself together and all that. So uh, Sunday morning, my normal ritual, I got up and I went to the service station to get my coffee. So he was in there and he was slumped over. And I said, what's wrong? And I so we talked with her like that, so he could barely just make it. Now, mind you, in le- less than seven days, he was fine. He got off work that day, went home, and died. How do people die that quick? I went to get my hair cut uh, Friday, and um, and the guy that was cutting my hair, he told me, he said, I, well, I asked him, I said, said you going to mess it the classic? He said, no, I'm not going to uh, the class. He said, I got to go to a funeral. He said, he said, he said, one of my friends, his mother passed away. And he said, listen, he said, uh, he said, he said, on Thursday, she found out that she had lung cancer, was fine, never had any symptoms, and then like they had lung cancer. And he said, she just died Sunday morning. I said, what? But what happens is that fear sets in fear sets in so the best way that i can explain because you got people that live for years with cancer you got people that live for years with different kind of sickness and different kinds of disease but what happens is that fear sets in and fear will speed up the process of you getting up out of here it will it will speed it up to a point to where you i mean everything just what just start going down immediately so what happens is this right here. We've got to look at how water freezes, how water freezes in order to understand how the body works and to understand how fear works as well. Uh, 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 so because when you get anxious about something or you get fearful about something, your heart starts what? It starts speeding up. Go out there and let somebody get ready to run into you. Your heart, it starts, it starts speeding up at a very abnormal pace. You know, uh, 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 sometimes when you get an email or you get a text message or then you get a phone call, your body goes into this, this super speeding mode. And uh, at, at, at some point, you begin to sweat just awfully. I mean, it's just, it's just real. It's, it gets real bad. I swear, if I get stressed out or something like that, I, I just go to sweating because my body begins to sweat. It begins to heat up. But have you ever made ice cubes in an ice tray before? So uh, uh, I learned this years ago. Uh, we used to make ice all the time. We used to have about 10 or 15 trays. Pastor Coleman loves ice. And we would not buy no ice you know, from the store. We made our own ice. So we'd get the ice and we'd put cold water in the ice trays. Take the cold water, put in the ice trays, and that, that ice would get, get it would be forever for the ice. And I don't know how we came across this. But Pastor Coleman said, so put hot water in the ice trays. And then put in there and that water start getting cold and it start freezing. But that don't even make no sense, does it? Hot water freeze faster than cold water. You would figure if you put cold water in a freezing refrigerator, it's what? It's going to freeze quickly. This relates to how people get up out of here a little quicker than it does. What, you know, whatever. So what happens? You have what you call the... Um, The uh, impoto effect, the impoto effect. Impoto effect only became into effect, they found out what it was only in 2013 because it's been a mystery for years at how hot water would freeze more rapidly than cold water would. This is going to bless you today. We're going to be finished. I'm going to read two scriptures and we're going to be finished. 
uh, so what happens is this right here, uh, uh, and this is what I call the Mickey Mouse effect. Now, it's not called Mickey Mouse effect, but it's Mickey Mouse. Water is made up of, uh, of, 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 of three atoms, of, of three elements. You have two hydrogen elements, which is small. Then you have an oxygen element, which is big. So you got a big face and two little ears. Big face and two little ears. So uh, what happens, these come together to create the water. So when, uh, when water is cold, what happens right here is this, when the water is cold, or then you put cold water into a freezer, uh, 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 um, the, the, the atoms, they, the atom, it just sits there. And it releases off energy very slowly. It releases energy very slowly. But when that water is hot, you have the same elements that's there, but it releases energy at a more rapid pace, at a very rapid pace. Best way I can explain that, if I can take a cup of water and set a cup of water here, and I can put a hot plate right here and put the same amount of water on the hot plate. And when I put that water on that hot plate, the same amount of water, Eventually, this cold water, this lukewarm water, is going to evaporate what? Over time. But when I put that hot water on that hot plate, if it's about that much water there, within minutes, what? It's going to be gone. So what happens is the way uh, it takes energy in order for water to freeze. So what happens is this right here. Cold water, watch this right here. The energy does what? It's released at a slower pace. And hot water is released, what? At a very rapid pace. The energy is given off real fast, and the more energy that's put into that water, the more what? The more it's going to freeze. Look at the water that's sitting here that's not on the hot plate that's going to evaporate, and this one over here. See, both, both things of water, it has vapors, but the vapors you'll never see, what? Is the one that's cold. And the vapors that you'll see at a very rapid pace, what? Is the one that's hot. And, this, and, the, and the energy, what? So that's how you get your steam, uh, your steam engines and all that kind of, that's how they, what? That's how they run and they get on. So what happens is this right here, just like I gave you the example of when you come into a situation that brings fear into your life, your whole body starts doing what? Starts speeding up. Have you ever been scared about some? Uh, they, uh, they, and then your heart rate, and your heart was beating so fast, you'd be telling yourself, I need to calm down. I need to calm down. I need to calm down. That's because what? The energy, what? It is being released and it's evaporating, what? Quickly. So what fear does is this right here. It causes, one day you're doing fine, but when you go to the doctor, all you can see in front of you, what? Is the end coming. I wish I had help in here today. And things do what? It began to speed up at a whole rapid pace. Those two patients that had the lung cancer. Watch this right here. All they can see, the doctor said, I got cancer. What? I'm going to die. And it speed up so to the point to where they just give out. Some of us, our fear engine is, 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 is not on cold, it's not on lukewarm, but it is massively what? Well, well I'm not going to say it's on hot, but it's what? It's real warm. Causes so many things, what? That disturb us, concerning our health, concerning our finances, and what? And everything, we, and we always in a mode, what? Of anxiety. We all, but have you ever noticed, no matter how much anxiety that you have, the solution, what? It still don't come. But we are, we what? We at a rapid pace. And the pace is so rapid, we do what? Just like the boiling water gives off the energy, we do what? By the time we sit down and think about all our problems, all our issues, all our sickness and disease, we don't have no energy, what? To do nothing. And we sit down and what? And we become frozen and don't move. <laughs> and fear causes us what? Not to move. But that cold water that sits there is not bubbling. It ain't doing nothing. It may be a whole month before it evaporates. You may even have a cup of water that's been sitting on your nightstand or something for a while. And you don't feel like getting them to go and get none. You just go to make sure ain't nothing in it. And you do what you just, and you just sip it right on up. But you let that water be hot. 
Have you ever been boiling something in the kitchen? And you just going to keep your eye on it. You went in there and what? And all of the water was gone. <laughs> all cracked up and all that. Got a little brown on me. Understand what I'm saying? But fear does what? It speeds up the process to destruction. So but we've got to do what? Overcome our fears and do what? And calm down on purpose. And say, this is not going to worry me. My sickness is not going to worry me. How do you have people that live for tons of years with deadly illnesses and they never die? They do what? They stay out of fear. They stay out of fear. And they just sit back. I'm just doing what? Taking it day by day. These same folk be out working in their gardens, be out doing different kind of stuff and all that kind of stuff like that. And they... I never understood. My grandmother had arthritis for years, as long as I knew her. Be out there in the garden with that hoe, hoe Plant gardens. And it's the wrong thing to say. They said, well, I got to die from something. I just might as well go on out here and do what I got to do. Get on that bus and go downtown and walk blocks. Knees swollen. My little knee was swollen. I was like, well, you know, can they give me a, give a scooter around? <laughs> you, you, you understand what I'm saying? Be all in Walmart. Leaned over the, not the, but that wasn't Walmart. No, back then it was uh, 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 Piggly Wiggle and Western, well, uh, Liberty. Be leaned all over the basket. Ain't nobody going to the store for me. And that's how all the old folks was. And they live what? A long time. Because they did not get in fear of the sickness. They had the sickness, but the sickness did not what? Have them. So, but we do what? Become frozen in one solid state and we can't move. So how do we eradicate the fear of sickness, the fear of lack, the fear of all that? Watch this right here. Um, Philippians 4 and 6 says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition or supplication with thanksgiving, present your request to God. So he says this. He says, don't be fearful. What? About nothing but pray. Don't be fearful about it, but what? But pray. And we've got to get back into a mode to where, you know, the cliche was, if you're going to worry, don't pray. If you're going to pray, what? Don't worry. So we've got to what? Pray about these things. So when we pray, okay, God, your word said that by your stripes we already heal. I decree and declare through the blood of Jesus, by the name of Jesus, that this body is a healed body. And you get on up and do what? And start taking care of your business. So, uh, so then, but at the same time, what happens is this right here. Is that, is that, is that our sickness or sickness and disease will talk to you. So, um. When I hurt my knee, my her knee is completely 100% healed. Uh, 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 off mornings, I have a little stiffness in it. So what happens is that when I, uh, I get up and I have, well, bef before I get out the bed, I say, Lord, I wonder if this knee stiff today. I ain't even got to be. Now, it's not stiff every day. It may be stiff once every two, three weeks. Lord, I'm going to have to get up, and am I going to have to hold on to the side of the bed? And, well, you yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I said, that's true. That's true. <laughs> that's true. So I have a, so one morning I got up and I done, done held on to the side of the bed. Now, mind you, my knee done been healed for months. But every once in a while, I done have that little stiffness. Get up, and I say, and I got to hold on to the bed. And it wasn't nothing in it. It wasn't no stiffness. No, and I said, so I started walking. The Lord stopped me and said, he said, how come you just couldn't go and get up out the bed since you're talking about your knee is 100% completely healed? I got you. But I let the old injury do what? Talk to my spirit. How many of us do that? We let what's happening on the inside of us what? Talk to us all day what? And all night long. Lay there in the bed 10, 15 minutes. Lord, I pray this thing ain't hurting today. But I won't know till I get up. <laughs> you, 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 you understand what I'm saying? 
what the, your body starts what talking to you and when your body begins to talk to you we do what we act upon what our body has said to us or what our mind excuse me what our mind has said to us I'm up on the best side of the bed and I got my little desk and put my hand on and just be moving along and ain't nothing wrong with it. I could run through the whole house and